everybody, this is Randy Santel, Atlas with FoodChallenges.com. I'd like to welcome you to our very first video of our how-to series. We're going to be explaining every different type of food challenge. There's over 28 and we're going to be explaining how to beat them and how to strategize to dominate them. Today, we're going to be explaining a general how to win a food challenge, the basic process. We're here in St. Louis, Missouri, downtown at the Dubliner taking on the hot mess food challenge. This one is about three and a half pounds. If you've never done a challenge before, you need to start out with something like this to find out how good of an eater you are, how much you can eat. Before we even go into strategy, you have to have proper stomach capacity in order to fit the challenge in your stomach. If you can't fit it all, your strategy doesn't matter. Now for this one, it's only three and a half pounds, but if you've never eaten that much, you've got to do stomach training. And for tips on that, we're not gonna explain it in this video, but definitely check out, there's over 10 different articles on foodchallenges.com, all about how to increase your stomach capacity. But once you have the proper stomach capacity and you've trained all week or all day or whatever you decide is best for you and your body, you want to think about your strategy. Before even getting to the restaurant, you break down your strategy as to what the components of the challenge are. Now for this one, there's three burger patties on it, along with cheese. There's also a full Reuben sandwich on it, used as the bun. So we've got a top sandwich here, top sandwich here. Also, we've got plenty of fries. The strategy for this food challenge and with a lot of challenges, you've got to look at it, eat the meat and the proteins first, and then the carbs. So we're going to be looking at eating the burgers first, then we'll move on to the sandwich. Since it's just a sandwich, we'll probably eat that whole, and then we'll do the fries last. The only time you really don't want to do the carbs last is if they're not going to be that good when they're cold and mushy and they won't go down that easy. But on some, like crinkle cut fries and things like that, they're really, really tough and you don't want to eat them when you're really full because if you're really full and you don't like the food, that's not good. You're more liable to be throwing up and which will fail the challenge. To start out, I always have my ritual and you may want yours too. Make sure that you are prepared and confident and doing my ritual is what helps me feel that I'm ready for the challenge and ready to get the win. And what I do, I usually have music, but for the purpose of this video, I don't. But if you want to listen to music, definitely do that. When you're not focused on the food, you're able to eat more. So that's one strategy I do. To start every challenge I do, I know I go to the bathroom because typically for every food challenge, you're not allowed to get up or go to the bathroom. You may be able to walk around and do what you want, but you can't go to the bathroom. So do that beforehand. Then when I sit down, I'll do it right now. That is when I transform into Atlas, a food dominating machine. Now you may want to do whatever is best for you and whatever gets you confident, but confidence is king when it comes to food challenges. You have to go into it knowing that you will win. Before you get started, you have to make sure that the people are watching, especially if it's timed. And now this one, there's a 30 minute time limit, so we're gonna make sure that they're here so that we can begin. I know we got plenty of time, but They've got to start their timer, but I've also got mine. You always want to know exactly where you're at. Now with this challenge, you may see over here, and most challenges don't have drinks required, but for this one, we've got to do our Guinness and our shot. I'm gonna drink the Guinness with the challenge because it's required and you always want to drink the required drinks first. But. I like to switch up the flavors when I'm doing challenges because if you eat a lot of food, the flavor is going to get tiring as you go on. So I've got my water. My favorite non-carbonated beverage is lemonade. And then once I start to fill up, it helps break down the carbs with the acidity and the carbonation. And it helps me burp up any remaining space, but I've got my diet soda there. Got to save on calories. But for this, we're going to get started. First, I'm going to do the meats and then I'm gonna move on to the sandwich, then we're gonna do the fries, and then we'll do the pickles along the way. 
Then we will finish and celebrate with our shot. Let's get it started. Got my timer here. They're ready. We've got one, two, three. All right, got a half hour. You always want to eat as quick as you can for the first 10, 15 minutes before your body, your brain triggers to your body that you're starting to fill up. So luckily for this, 30 minutes is gonna be good for me. But if you're a little bit slower eater, you definitely need to start out fast. Now, bacon is just like any meat. You can eat it first too. Get the meats down. And you're better off, just like me, leave the cheese and the bacon and everything all together with the burger, which helps the flavor. You're eating to enjoy the food, not just to win. You can do both. All right, so now we're moving on to our sandwich. We got our meat down, which was delicious. And another thing to remember is before you even start the challenge, you have to make sure that it's cooked accurately. You want to get your fries. You don't want them extra crispy. You want to be able to eat them because if they're, if you make them too crispy, they'll be very dense and all of the liquids will kind of be fried out of them. Just like a steak would be medium rare. You want your fries medium rare. And you want your burger meat or whatever meat you have, you want that kind of medium rare too or rare because the more juicy it is, the easier it will go down. But with this sandwich, we've got corned beef, but we've also have all of this different part of the Reuben sandwich with the Thousand Island or whichever dressing they went with to help get it down. So let's do that now. Any eating contest you do or anything you do, the easiest way to fail is by eating one at a time, just sitting there gnawing like a little gerbil. You're gonna take all day if you do that. So what I do, this isn't the sexiest thing obviously, but I take a little ball and I do it as cleanly as I can, but by crushing the french fries into a little ball, it not only softens the french fries to reduce some of the crispiness, but it also puts it all into one big little ball so that there's no air in it and I can just put it all in my mouth, just like this. Now the other, rather than eating just one at a time, is to take a bunch into one hand, and this is obviously a little bit neater, This will make your girlfriend or boyfriend a lot happier than if you balled them up at a nice restaurant. But, just take it like this, they're all still compact. Just Now as you can see, I've got pretty much my Guinness down. This is just a personal thing. If it's beer, I love it. But for you, and any challenge that doesn't require a certain drink, a lot of challenges don't require, they may require a soft drink or something, but not beer. But like I talked about, now is the time when there's not much left. You may start suffering from flavor fatigue, which just means that you're starting to get tired of the taste. It's not as delicious as it was in the beginning. In this case, this whole thing was delicious because I love these french fries. But at this point, you may want to start working in not only your water, but Hawaiian Punch, or if you're going on uh, low calories, you may go Powerade Zero, or um, some kind of diet juice, or regular juice. Something non-carbonated is what I do second. And then, 
if I'm really getting full, especially if I have carbs or buns or something where I'm not going to dunk it, I want to still enjoy it. With the soda, the carbonation helps burp up all of the remaining air because when you're doing a food challenge, it's just like all the food's just playing Tetris going down your esophagus into your stomach. You don't want to have much air in there and you also don't want to have too much liquids in there either. So you got to be careful as you're drinking. Drink the required drinks first, but don't just splurge and just chug a bunch of water, soda, whatever you're drinking during it, because that's just going to take up room in your stomach. Focus on eating the food. Only drink if you really need to, or if you have to switch up the flavor. The other thing is that I drink diet soda for is because the acidity of the soda helps break down the carbs and everything like that. It not only helps my taste buds, but it also makes it go down easier, which helps me beat the challenge in time. But for this case, I don't need that soda because I still got some beer left and I'm just using a little bit of water. But let's get the rest of the fries down so we can end this challenge and take my victory shot. that's all the food. Make sure you don't have stuff all over your mouth either. Make sure you use napkins or whatever. 20 minutes in. Thank you guys for watching. We still had basically 10 minutes left and that's with plenty of talking. Now like I said that was the beginner challenge. That was one of the smallest challenges that I've done that wasn't spicy. But if you're a beginner, you need to build your confidence first by doing something like that. It's worth it to get that experience, build that confidence. If you destroy a challenge like that, then you can move on to something else. You kind of know what your body can do. So many people fail challenges. It's, it's, it's crazy. People that have never done a challenge before will go try to eat five, six pounds. It's just not a smart move. Start with something. You may say, hey, I want to do a challenge that's free if I win, rather than one like this one where you only get a shirt if you do win. But if you fail that challenge, you got to pay for it anyway. And that's not only a loss, but it might ruin your confidence too. A lot of people try one challenge that's too big for them. They fail, and then they don't try a challenge again. Boost your confidence, get excited about it, beat the first challenge, then you can move on to other stuff. And now, with this video, as an eater, you have a basic understanding of what you need to do to win your first or next food challenge. I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, feel free to email us, get on foodchallenges.com. But until my next video, this is Randy Santel, Atlas with foodchallenges.com, teaching people how to win food challenges all over the world.